Hello, my name is Rosalind Massey and I'm a PhD candidate at Carleton University in Canada where I work with the Organic Sensors and Devices Laboratory to create cortisol biosensors. I am presenting my supervisor, Professor Ravi Prakash, and my work on the flexible organic electrolyte gated field effect transistor biosensor with integrated soft fluidics for cortisol monitoring in oral samples. Our device fills the need for fast, accurate biomolecule quantification. Presently, these tests are run using enzyme-linked immunosorbent assays, which are extremely effective, but require up to four hours to run and also require lab bench procedures. This produces a centralised testing process which can be easily overwhelmed in times of extreme need, such as the COVID pandemic. We also hope to avoid invasive testing processes, which have a risk of pain and infection for the patient and an infection risk for everyone involved in the biological sample chain. I begin by discussing why we used an OFET architecture with an electrolyte as a gate dielectric and the benefits and challenges associated with these devices. Organic semiconductors act as transient resistors under sufficiently high source drain electric fields to induce current channels. The current channel can also be induced by an electric field from an isolated gate electrode, where the effective field is dependent on the applied bias and the dielectric properties of the insulating layer. Thereby, the device operating conditions are determined by the applied voltages and the material properties of the device. Electrolytes under an electric field demonstrate extremely efficient charge separation, as they not only demonstrate ionic polarisation of the solvent, but they ha have movement of charged particles. The movement leads to multiple distinct layers at the electrolyte solid interface that reduces the electric field felt in the bulk and produces high dielectric constants. Their excellent dielectric properties has led to interest in using electrolytes as gate insulators. This is especially true for biosensors, as changes in the gate insulating analyte directly affect the device output characteristics and can therefore be correlated to changes in analyte composition. Further, these devices can be made specific to a single biomolecule by the inclusion of biorecognition molecules such as aptamers or antibodies. Four common electrolyte gated FET biosensors are shown in the figure. The first is an ion selective FET which requires a reference electrode in order to function adequately. The second is an EGO FET, which has been consistently demonstrated in research to be an effective biosensor. However, it has the semiconductor and the gate in direct contact with the electrolyte, which leads to significant semiconductor degradation within the first few tests. The third example removes the semiconductor degradation out for, by isolating the electrolyte, However, due to this isolation, it requires a reference electrode again. We propose the organic electrolyte gated field effect transistor biosensor, which does not require a reference electrode and also protects the semiconductor and the gate from the, from the electrolyte. We propose to use saliva as our test analyte. Saliva is colloquially called the mirror of the body as biomolecule concentrations are effectively correlated for small lipid soluble biomolecules such as corticosteroids and neurotransmitters that passively diffuse from the blood to the saliva glands. This is due to the free hormone hypothesis that states bioactivity is related to the free unbound biomolecules in sera rather than the whole biomolecule count. Challenges to using saliva is that saliva production and collection techniques can actually affect the biomolecule concentration, as well as there being risks of adulteration through micro-injury and food debris. Fabricating and testing these devices is a multi-step process that begins with fabricating the electrode surface. Transistor electrodes are patterned on a flexible capton substrate using conventional liftoff techniques. Following this, to spentacine, a small molecule organic semiconductor is deposited through spin processing. This molecule has the highest charge mobility of most organic semiconductors whilst remaining solution processable. The charge is transmitted in this molecule through pi stacking, which is the overlap of pi orbitals in highly ordered crystals. Following this, PVA is the first dielectric layer as it has a high dielectric constant of 9. PDMS is used as a second dielectric layer as it is highly inert to reduce biofouling. One of the key challenges of integrating polydimethylsiloxane microchannels is binding them to PMMA. To address this challenge, we deposit an aptes monolayer on 200 nanometers of PMMA on Kapton, which we then oxygen plasma activated along with the microchannels. We put them in contact and bake them at 120 degrees C for one hour, and then contacted the microchannels with more uncured PDMS on a second Kapton substrate with an extended room temperature curing of 72 hours. As you can see in the figure, this creates microchannels which effectively contain the green fluid even under flexing. 
In order to fabricate the flexible biosensor with integrated microchannels, we deposited PMMA on a Kapton substrate with a deposited metal top gate. Then, with the Aptes process, we bound the microchannels, ensuring the well area was constantly protected from Aptes deposition. Prior to the final contact with the uncured PDMS of the electrode surface, we immobilised cortisol aptness in the well area through UV activation of the PMMA surface. The top left figure shows the electrodes and the microchannels of the final device, and the top right the entire device under Fletcher. Transistor output characteristics were collected using a Hewlett-Packard semiconductor parameter analyzer using low power voltage sweeps in order to collect the transfer characteristics, output characteristics and gate leakage tests. Using cortisol concentrations of 23 micromolar to 2.7 picomolar and progesterone concentrations of 31.7 micromolar to 3.17 picomolar, we were able to determine specificity and device reactions to concentration. Under these conditions, we examined the shelf life, output characteristics, transfer characteristics, specificity to cortisol and amperimetric response of the biosensor devices. Our first outcome shows the promising source drain current collected using a cortisol dilution of 2.73 nanomolar. We as the we observed lower required biases than our previous iterations of the cortical biosensor. This is because of the reduction of plate separation caused by integrating the test wells increases capacitance. We also observed improved resilience to repeated high voltage testing. The hysteresis demonstrated in these curves is common for organic materials, especially those with organic, dielectric, organic semiconductor interfaces. It is important to note that this will not affect devices operating at constant biases, such as our proposed device. Our second outcome clearly demonstrates that output current is dependent on biomolecule concentration. As biomolecule concentration increases from C1 at 2.76 picomolar to C8 at 27.3 micromolar, we see a dramatic decrease in the output current with excellent resolution between biomolecule concentrations. This encompasses the physiological range of cortisol in saliva, which is 2 to 16 nanomolar. Our third outcome demonstrates the specificity of our devices to cortisol. With cortisol binding, we demonstrate a clear inverse correlation between concentration and output current. This correlation is lost when using progesterone. So this demonstrates progesterone levels of 31.7 micromolar and 31.7 nanomolar. And it is clear that we have a loss of that same inverse correlation, which would indicate Binding. Our outcome 4 demonstrates the efficacy of using our biosensors as amperometric devices. Not only do we have that excellent um, inverse concentration to output current relationship, but when we extract the lumped capacitance term from our previously described models, we actually have an even stronger inverse co concentration to CDI correlation, which has better resolution than current alone. This demonstrates that we can use our devices as amperometric biosensors in the future, and we will be able to directly correlate the extracted parameters to concentration. Our outcome five investigates the shelf life of our lab prototype. We observed extended longevity compared to our previous devices, where I would often see a loss of transistor action after the first two days, and instead observed only a 20% change in sensor performance over our 15-day test period. This is also significant compared to literature electrolyte gated effects, which can show up to a 60% reduction in output characteristics over the first 11 hours. We also observed preserved binding action over our testing period due to the reversible denaturation of aptamers. We conclude by discussing how our findings affect our future work. Integrating the microfluidic channels into the biosensor had many benefits. The first is that it increased the shelf life. Rather than seeing a complete loss of transistor action over two days, we actually only saw a 20% change in output characteristics over 15. This we attribute to integrating the microchannels and the PDMS layer with the biosensor as actually reducing the potential for environmental doping, thus extending our shelf life. We also observed reduced power requirements where there was actually a 70% reduction in power requirements required to drive the same output currents that we observed is with our previous devices. We observed excellent resolutions in that inverse relationship between current and concentration and excellent resolution in the extracted parameter and to concentration relationship. We also reduced our minimum limit of our minimum limit of detection that we measured for up to 2.73 picomolar, which is a tenfold improvement in the limit of detection. 
with a 20% improved current output for those same concentrations. Our findings in this paper were promising and are the first step on the road to creating a point-of-care cortisol sensing device. Our next steps are to reduce the reliance on conventional fabrication processes, so rather than having a lift-off procedure for printing the electrodes, we want to use doctor blading systems or bioplotters in order to print those electrodes. We also want to improve the crystallinity of our organic semiconductor by including a self-assembled monolayer. This will induce increase our charge mobility and thus improve our output characteristics. We also want to uh, create a effective sample preconditioning and handling microchannel to replace the simple microchannel we have now in order to be able to have a complete sample to analysis system on our chip. We also want to test with saliva and other complex media to demonstrate that our device still, still functions even in the complex environment and we want to finally collect an amperometric sensor system for data collection. This work was made possible by the financial support of NSERC, uh, the Carlton Research Assistant Funds and the CMC Microsystems Fabrication Grants, as well as everyone at the Organic Sensors and Devices Laboratory at Carlton, in particular my uh, supervisor, Professor Ravi Prakash, the other members of the Organic Sensors and Devices Laboratory and the Carlton Nanofab staff members. Thank you for listening to my presentation on our cortisol biosensor device. I'm here for questions.